Well, today, as you can see, we're at Kringle Plantation. And we're going to try and find Connell Can. So that's uh, Connell Can, that's where we're going to. Not too far in, it says on the outskirts of the forest. And it's supposed to be quite an easy track. Well, it's afternoon. First few days of September it really is an Indian summer, I feel. We're in Kringle Plantation. And we're looking for a Fulton called the Connell Can. Connell Can! I don't have much history about it, unfortunately. And bits and pieces about it. I'm sure will be of interest here. Um, it's a pretty forest laid out in the uh, 30s, I think. Come, Penny. And Connock uh, means gorsy or furs. And um, collection of gas for burning, basically. According to the map down below, there it was right on the perimeter of the plantation. I did take some pictures of it many years ago. which book it's in. It has another very pretty name. It's called the uh, Christmas Thornton. Because of Christmas. All the fairies in the glen and the forest they come down and decorate it. Tinsel and such like. Very pretty. Nobody's ever seen them doing it. But it's like all things in Manx, it just happens. It was part of, part of isn't it, of the Gary Moore intact. And the Gary Moore situation is just to my left. And um, Like the all this area, if you make it out of that sugary rock you get from Macpool, the name of Convig and Garrett, and the Smatrick Masson would run through the middle of it. This is the area, really. So I thought about time I did something up around here, because I've been up around the north and the west. The south has been. Mr. Pine, I think, missed out. One of the oldest rails in, the one at the moment is Floddy Convig. You ever watch me, little motor glory and country file? She's the lady they interviewed, and uh, she was telling me she remembers coming up to Connacan with her mum to have tea. So you see, again, not that long ago, not that long ago. She's in the middle 90s now, so take a few years off that, and places in the 30s. When we get to it, you think, how on earth did anybody live here? But they did, and they live well. Live well and eat well. So this is Kringle Plantation, quite a big one. And in the air, there's the middle of it, or in the side of it, there's another farm called Kringle Farm. We may do sometime, but it's a pretty boring place. 
and I could never really get any decent pictures of it. Like this place. Again, Penny and I are out. Not a soul. Not a soul. It's a great path, there must be great on the pushback. Fairly easy to walk to. That's no use for a wheelchair of course, but if a couple of decent legs you could get here. It's a difficult to know how big it was. Maybe 20 acres maybe. I said originally this was all Gary Moore intact land. So Gary Moore would have been the the main one and all these little places would have what I suppose just be taken off it as it became crofted land. Goldie's book on the uh, Salton world. The first page or the first colour page on the front of it. It's got a Gary Moore picture. And uh, Dennis Convig's family came from there. Dennis used to work for Stephen Christian, he was retired. But they stopped farming up in the 70s. Flurry Convig, they used to live at Balavaran and we used to live at Silbrick. And most Sundays when I was a kid we used to go up to Balavaran in the summertime. On a Sunday night and head around their farmyard and around their sheds. A dozen of us. And Flurry would put on our supper. Never seemed to be any trouble for her. And even after that, whenever I called there, there was always tea and cake. Tea and cake. Most of them was Robert Convig. Obviously from Ronig as well. Ronig. Had a bad accident a few years up above the rain when he got his hand trapped in their own baler. They said the only way they could get his hand out was to reverse it. Even do they, that sounds horrendous. Most of his family still involved in farming. Again, time plays tricks, doesn't it? I don't think it was this far in. Maybe I've missed it. It doesn't really matter if we have, because it's a lovely day to be out. Because we came here, there was Kringle Reservoir. It was built in the Second World War with some prisoners. And Manx Lads too, of course. I'm not really sure whether it is used as a reservoir anymore. make it real nice. Confrigure don't they with the sun coming through and that greenery. I think this flames rather than black and much further than this we'll be up at 
the rent the table. And on she goes, on into the distance. see something in this distance. These rows of trees always remind me of cathedrals. The big pillars towering overhead. So there we are folks. Connell Cannon. Connell Cannon indeed. Little spot there would have been the house at one time. And this little place is the barn. Oh, bye. Again, you know, built into the side of the hedge, or the side of the hill. It would have been a shallow little spot. You can imagine before the trees turned up, or grew up anyway. So we just pop inside, poke around. Yeah, it's as I remember, it's as I remember. Although well, that wall there is certainly given way to the old tree, it's pressing down on it. When I was last here, there was a little pot. In, the wind, in this little hole here. Now I see, still here, but it's rusted away. Time takes everything back eventually, doesn't it? Somebody's built a little shelter up. Just have a time when they come down here for a cup of tea. Now you didn't believe me about the fact that this was a Christmas thought, and I can tell that by the silence. Well, I will find some details to prove I was right and you were wrong. Well, that looks like tinsel to me. Certainly nowhere. Not growing on a tree, that's for sure. There's definitely no tree fungus that, that's for sure. Now normally, rubbish like this does get to my tit. But because this is known as a Christmas Sultan, we can forgive them, I'm sure. I'd always understood this to be the house because the buyer didn't have any chimneys or any fireplaces of such. I could be wrong, of course, this may not have been it because there's very little evidence of a chimney in this place either. 
Now you see, if I was a kid, that thing, hmm, I think I'll walk up this. There would be no danger, would there, and falling off. You'd roll down. When I get to my eyes and think, if I fall down there, I may not roll. So we'll give it a miss today. Now this is the other way in. Now whether this is the main way in or where I came, I don't know. But the road kind of goes between the barn and the house. If that was the house, so it's possible it is. Be about 20 acres or so. One cow, a couple of sheep, maybe a pig. They probably work on the rest of the farms around here to make a living. They may be making any money either, or they won't be making a living. It also does have a plethora of these lovely little, what I call, they look like clover, but it's not. And uh, I do know what it's called, I'll find when I go back. It's quite unique to up around here apparently, quite unique. I think there's a place called Bella Elson or Bella Lyson. It so was up for sale many years ago for a few hundred thousand. I don't know whether it got sold or not. They did clear it all out. But nature's taken over again. So we'll walk and have a look at, quick look inside. I did take some pictures to add to it for you. Oh. Different to the last time I was inside. It's changed a lot. It's going to see people put some lentils in to keep the little place up. Commendable. And at the same time as corn, can I guess? A little corner fireplace. I didn't see that last time. I always think when I come back, I've seen everything, but I never have. The RV clings on no matter what you do, doesn't it? Corn into the masonry. Unless you don't know, drag it all down. Fairly newish because it's all been rendered. It's got the uh, traditional big granite stones too. Surprise us, some of these came from Stony Mountain. I was always told this place by the logos is called Scottish Place. Well, I can't the fellow lived here. Look after some sheep on the mountain behind it. So I assume I was looking after sheep that would be Scottish. Took some photos many years ago and it has deteriorated quite dramatically. This one I'm afraid. No idea this one is going to be anymore. I do remember though having two huge big fireplaces. The photographs will show that. I remember this ivy crawling up it. And um, if you look up above the doorway there, it had thatch on. The stones are still protruding out. I think this one's definitely going past its rebuild dates. I'm going to through the photographs when I did that. But it's still a reminder, even if it's just for me.